All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Mathy Hour tonight. I'm Sarah Knapp. I am the founder of Mathy Hour. Super excited to have everyone here. Before we get going, just a few ground rules for everyone. So as everyone can tell, there is obviously chat if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. And if you're signed into the Mathy Hour website, you'll also see the chat. Please be nice to each other, introduce yourself, say hello ask questions in there. We want that space to be a place where everyone feels comfortable asking questions, saying hi and all that good stuff. Um, so just want to let everyone know about that. And then the other little note before we get started is the North Face hooked us up with this really cool duffel bag tonight. So we're gonna be raffling that off at the very end to one person who donates and all the donations are going to Stoked. So that's on the Mappy Hour page. You should see a button that says donate. Uh, you have until, uh, let's say, 7.45 Eastern to get those donations in. And then we will uh, pick one person and I'll send out the, the double bag to you. Um, so if you're thinking about donating to Stoked, now is the time. All right, announcements over. I'm so excited to have Steve here with us tonight. Uh, Steve and I met years ago and we were just talking before we went live about how the pandemic actually brought us closer because we've been able to chat and brainstorm and talk about a lot of fun stuff over the past eight months. Um, so I feel honored to have you here with us today, Steve. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, excited to show the movie, but also excited to uh, be formally introduced to the Mappy Hour community. So, yeah. All right. So I know you get this question all the time, but tell us why you decided to start Stoked, what was the impetus behind that, and what's your origin story? Yeah, so I, like shortly after 9-11, so Stoked has been around for, this is our 16th year. Uh, we got started, because um, I was I was just kind of going through some really, uh, after 9-11, I went into like a, like anxiety, depression, um, and I was searching for something and I didn't know what that was. <laughs> um, and I, I started, I read a book and I it like chance encounter on the G train in New York city. I ran into this guy selling his book and it talked about mentoring and I, uh, the, it just really sparked something in me. So I started mentoring kids. Um, and then I got a mentor myself and I was like living this mentoring life, living in Brooklyn. Um, I was, I used to, uh, run my own marketing company. And after that, um, I, I quit, I quit it and I started working for the place that I was volunteering at. And I was like, I only want to work for companies that give back to the world. And I remember saying that, and you got to be careful what you wish for, because that's what ended up happening. Um, so I started, I started mentoring, I started mentoring kids and I just loved it so much. Uh, and the other parts of my life, like it just, I just knew that I wanted to do something bigger. Um, and so I took an inspiration trip to go snowboarding in Whistler. Um, and, uh, and it was like, I went to, to Pacific Northwest and I just had this moment where I was like, you know, if I could do anything in the world right now, what would I do? I was like, yeah, I would go to Whistler especially that's a good question to ask yourself. Like if you are going through some really, really tough times and you're struggling with what to do, like ask yourself this question, like if I could do anything in the world right now, what would I do? And so mine was just like, I looked at my snowboard that was in my living room and I was like, I would go snowboarding in Whistler. So my uncle took me to Whistler. He took me to Grouse and Seymour in the Pacific Northwest. He drove me to Mount Baker. He drove a, he owned a limo company. And, uh, and so I literally got chauffeured around in a limo by my uncle and he didn't even snowboard or ski at all. Like he just took me. And so like he sat in, he sat in the, he sat in his car while I snowboarded all day. I didn't even like, I check in with lunch, but then that was it. And so I just had this really transformative time. And you know, when you take a trip and it's like, you're soaking it all in as much as possible because you got to go back to reality and you got to go back to real life. Like I, I was like, oh my God, let me just soak this in. I was like, oh my God, I wish, I wish my mentee was here with me. Like, I just really, really wish he, and I was like, oh my God, I should start a snowboard mentoring program. And 
that's how it started. And so like, that was, I got this spark of the idea and like, you know, for people like, how do you take an idea to do something? And like, you're probably the, a good person to talk to about that. But I mean, I really just put the idea on a sheet of paper and I literally talked to everybody. I even talked to my boss at the time. I talked to my coworkers. I talked to my friends and I would just get ideas from everywhere. Um, fast forward, because I knew how to start a mentoring program, I started recruiting kids, recruiting mentors. I didn't know how to fundraise, but I just started asking my friends for some money. Hey, can you give me $50? You know, hey, give me $100. I knew how to put together proposals. So I started doing outreach to different brands. Nobody called me. Um, and then I was like, I need a famous person to be down with this. <laughs> so I found this guy named Salema Masakela. He used to go by Sal Masakela. He was the host of the X Games. I found out who his agent was because I Googled his name and I found his number on a press release and I called it and I said, hi, I'm Steve. I'm a black guy living in New York and I'm starting a snowboard mentoring program for inner city kids. I'm trying to get in touch with uh, Sal uh, to be a part of it. And she was like, I think he would love to be a part of that. Let me give you the phone number to his agent. Just like okay. that. So it's like the other lesson is like, just say what you want, right? And so- yeah. I, I literally, I called his agent once a week for two months until he called me back. And then when he called me back, we bonded instantly because I had been doing my pitch the whole entire time. And uh, I got on a plane the, the next day to go and see him in LA. And that's wow. literally how we kind of got started. And I was, you got to be a part of this. You got to be a co-founder. I kind of forced him to do it, but like he gladly did it. And yeah. then after that, um, you know, we started with the snowboard, like we started a snowboarding program and then we got an idea to do a surfing program. Then we got an idea to do a skateboarding program. And then it was literally all grassroots community minded people just volunteering their time. Everything was donated back then. You know, like I, I wasn't, I, I was barely paying myself. Like I didn't, I didn't really just, I was just, I was just doing three other jobs just to do this. I put everything on credit cards. Um, and it was just a ton of fun. <laughs> it was so much fun. Uh, awesome. And so we we had since evolved to a you know an action sports organization. We use the lifestyle and culture of snowboarding, skateboarding, surfing to teach skills to kids. Um, and then you know after as we started to evolve, kids started saying, you know, I need a I need a uh, I want to hang out with you after school. They didn't really say that, yeah. but we started to create a, an after school program for them. So kids build skateboards after school um, and they learn critical thinking, collaboration, communication skills. And then what you're actually going to see part of the movie is kids are now creating their own brands and we're learning career skills like pitching and problem solving and collaboration and how to get your idea out there. Um, and so before COVID time, that's everything that we did. <laughs> During COVID time, uh, we, we we haven't been able to do our, our regular programming, but we did launch a, uh, a virtual career mentoring program for kids. And so if you're watching this, you want to get involved with Stoked after you watch this movie, um, you can sign up to be a mentor. And so we have a five-day mentoring challenge and uh, the five-day mentoring challenge teaches you, we have like a diversity, anti-racist curriculum. We teach you how to find your purpose. Um, we teach you about uh, the problems facing young people. We teach you how to be a mentor. So you go through that. And we actually, we have a, a, a it's called the mentoring challenge. It's five-day and it's it's uh, actually taking place next week. So you go to stoke.org slash mentoring challenge and you can sign up. So yeah. that's that's it that's it that's my like, origin story i know well that was really good because you answered like my first three questions already um i will just <laughs> plug the mentorship challenge i'm signed up i would love to see the mapiera community sign up so if you're watching and you're like maybe a little bit interested i'll email everyone the link after this and if you do want to join um i'm going to set up a whatsapp for us so we can like kind of go through it together and i'm gonna send you a bandana because I want you to come join me and do it with me. So um, if you're thinking about it, do it. All right. Um, so I actually think you, so my second question is just going to be a little bit more about like Stokes programs and how you feel like they are working to close the opportunity gap. And I was actually going to ask as well, if you could kind of like 
briefly like explain what the opportunity gap is according to you and stoked and like how you look at it and how you're trying to like um approach it and work within you know kind of these larger systems i know that's a big question but how does stoke no i just I, i'm shaking my head because <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, I'm i'm shaking my head because i'm grateful for you asking that question it like i have i have chills going up down my back because i I um, I feel like more people need to know this, right? Like I feel like more people need to know about the fate of what happens to young people from low income backgrounds, from kids from bad neighborhoods. I mean, under resourced neighborhoods, they're not bad. They're just they don't have un, they don't have a lot of resources. You know, kids for, that don't have like two parents around or a, a parent that's involved in their in their community. So the, the the opportunity gap is the difference in life trajectory between a low income kid and a middle class kid, right? Like period. It's like and and I've I've uh, actually writing a, a new book and it's literally just about opportunity, just on opportunity. And I found that um, like because I've been researching this literally for about eight nine years now. I've just I I'm obsessed about the opportunity gap and how to close it. And so. Uh, both liberals and conservatives from a policy level, they agree on what, uh, like what the solutions are, like how you actually get there is where they differ. Mm -hmm. Right. And so really it is, it comes down to, so, there, well, let, let me back up a bit. Part of it is like, as it relates to young people. So do you remember when you were growing up and maybe if you're watching this, like you went to an after school program or you went to the museum on the weekends uh, or you went to summer camp or you went on family vacations or you took music lessons and sports camps and all of those things, right? I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. A generation ago, middle class families, no, blue collar, low income families spent more time with their kids, right? Mm -hmm. However, in the past 30 years, those people have been working harder, so they haven't been able to in invest more into their kids. And at the same time, middle class families spent three times more on those activities that I just talked about on their kids, right? And they spent more time on their kids huh. in the past 30 years. You lay that sort of graph on top of it. That that explains where it correlates. It correlates to the uh, um, to the widening income back because now you look at the past 30, 35, maybe forty years now. Now, like the gap in wealth has widened, and now economists are now saying all of those things that I just talked about. All of those things that I just talked about. Summer camps extra jobs on this and like yeah like they all matter they mm -hmm. all matter everything yeah. outside of the classroom matters right so now we'll we'll talk about like what the 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 liberals and the conservative what the think tanks what the what the brains of people that are, that spending time they say yeah. it comes down to human capital your skills mm -hmm. social capital your relationships and your networks and you know that depending on what college or what high school or boarding school that you went to, yeah, right? Your financial capital, whether you have access to money, that makes a big difference. Yeah. And generational then cultural wealth. capital. Yep, generational wealth. And cultural capital, yeah. your experiences. What experiences do you have? Like, my God, I am like, I, I, and so for me, I look at it like this. If we could start playing with those levers, so like Stoked mm -hmm. is all about like skills, relationships through mentors and experiences through action sports we can't do anything about financial now but if we could take care of those three capitals human yeah. social and cultural and we leverage the culture of action sports in order to do it then yeah. that is how we can close the opportunity we actually need stoked isn't enough we need chill we need hoods to woods we need about a thousand of them right <laughs> in order for it because here's yeah. the statistic statistic by the time a middle class kid uh is 12 years old they have had 
4,000 more hours of those outside of classroom activities than low income kids. Imagine by the time they're 18 or 21, how many more hours? Right. So anyway, so that's, that's the opportunity. That's the yeah. opportunity. Guys. Yeah. Thank you for taking it's the crazy, time to like, it? lay that out. It's crazy. Let me, it's crazy. But here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. We all have our own opportunity gaps. We all, we all as adults and humans, we all have areas in which we can tweak the levers. Right. And so like, sometimes you need to, you need to be plugged into a different network of people. Sometimes you need to, and we've seen this with, with, uh, uh, we've seen this with COVID time, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's certain people that are making a lot more money these days. Yeah. Than other people. And then those other people, they have to show up to work. They're more at risk. They're low wage, low skill. They don't have the right experiences. Meanwhile, yeah. there are people that have adapted. There are people whose lifestyles haven't changed except for the fact that they don't have to go to an office now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're be... still making the same money. And sometimes they're even making more. Right. Yeah, not paying rent in the city they were living in. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so that's yeah. that's the opportunity. So I know you mentioned board sports and action sports, and I'm wondering if you can like tell us a little bit more. So you, I, as far as I know, Stoke has skateboarding, surfing, and snowboarding. Is that correct? That's it. Yeah. Okay. So why do you pick those three sports? Why not like add in slacklining? You know, like what is it about those sports that you feel like is important for the students or how do they serve um, this bigger vision? So, I mean, honestly, I, I probably could have done more, but I just wanted to focus. <laughs> and so <laughs> those particular sports are, are, it's about, I looked at it like, so snowboarding was about uh, you're on a mountain. It's like thinking big, dreaming big. And so I'm getting a kid on a bus to go outside of the city like that. That to me, was like I wanted I wanted that experience for young people. Right. For surfing, it was really around understanding your environment, being in tune. It's like literally our surfing program is probably the closest to church without having to go to church. It's like every sh every layer and filter that between adults and young people just get washed away with the water right mm -hmm. and because because it is such an impactful program you understand like we have the kids pick up trash before they go surfing we call it paying for waves the waves are for free but you got to pay for it somehow right so yeah. we pick up the trash and then we do like you know and and it, it's just it's just that and so and in skateboarding is is really around like how how young people you know are more resilient and how they are more uh you know, interact with the broader skate community, um, interact with their environment, um, you know, like in a city, start to see challenges as obstacles, um, you know, and, and things like that they can overcome. Um, and it builds a lot of confidence. So, I mean, really, I mean, those are the things that I was passionate about. Uh, you know, I, 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 there are so many more things that like, as we started having kids building skateboards, yeah. Right. The, the same feeling that kids were getting while they were building skateboards and completing building the skateboards, you could have swore they would, they just learned how to ride a surfboard. Right. Like it was just yeah. any, it, you can insert any activity, slacklining, right. you know, mountain climbing, rock climbing, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Okay, cool. So action sports in general are like sports in general, potentially not necessarily doesn't have to be snowboarding. That just was your passion. That was a passion. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm just wondering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, the career mentorship part of this, I know has been a part of Stoked since the beginning. And, I, you know, the title of this session was like the next generation of talent through action sports. So you talked about the opportunity gap and I'm wondering if you can maybe talk more about like the pipeline and like what skills these kids are learning or students are learning through Stoked that you feel like are helping them um, 
be that next generation of talent. And it, if you can like just help everyone like understand what that looks like um, yeah. through, through the program. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Uh, the thing that we do is that we really incorporate all the community. So we have a really large mentor community and it's, you know, if I was like a young, uh, you know, if I was early in my career, you know, mid career, I would have been like, oh, this was something that I would latch myself onto, right? Like if you're part of the Mappy Hour community, you should really be part of the Stoke community too. Cause yeah. it's like young professional, young professionals who are passionate about outdoor adventure action sports and they they surround themselves with like-minded people and so it's that kind of energy and our core values our core values are our acronym success teamwork openness kudos energy and determination so that's our foundation for the program and then we like the first one of the first things that we learn is uh kids learn is is this thing called FIES f-i-e-s firm handshake introduce yourself, eye contact and smile, right? So that's what kids learn. And then they learn how to speak up. They learn how to, because we do this thing called the Stoke Circle. So kids have to stand up. And if a young person participates in our program, they're speaking in a group of, of uh, you know, 40 people, no less than 15 times throughout the year. So they're like literally learning you know, 30 times a year because we do two circles a day. So like they're learning pro like how to project their voice and how to share what they're feeling. They're learning about vulnerability. They're learning about creating, being in a safe space. They're learning about um, surrounding themselves with diverse people. Kids that are like from, you know, one part of LA or getting to meet kids that go to a different part of LA or kids from, you know, from Brooklyn or getting to meet kids from the Bronx. So like there's their, their, their world is expanding and that helps change their mindset. That's, that's even before we start actually teaching them stuff. Right. And then uh, the other thing that they learn um, is literally about having options by getting on a board. It shows them that they are in control of their life and they can learn how to take healthy risks. Cause once they learn how to take healthy risks, and if we combine that with what they learn in the after school program, it's like it's it's even more powerful because now with the after school program, the kids literally the 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 skills that they're learning are like powerful. Like they are pitching, they're learning about how to send out emails, they're learning how to like uh, convince people. Uh, social media, they're learning about copywriting, they're learning about sales, brainstorming, like. All of the things that like every employer and we've talked to a lot of them are saying that those are the soft skills that you need in order to be successful at whatever company, you know? And so we start to, we're later on, we're, we'll start to develop like more technical skills, but really we focus on the soft skills. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. I guess my last question, it's almost 30 now, thinking of getting the, the video up, is how did this film come to be? What was the inspiration behind creating This is Stoked and working on this specific narrative to share? So we have a partnership with Huge, the ad agency. And so they helped sort of refine and scale our brand building program where kids build their own brands. So you'll see, so they have an in-house film department and then they pitched us this idea. And I was like, yeah, I mean, if you guys are going to do it for sure, like go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> and now, but now, now it, it really sums up like what we do, you know, and I, and I, and I believe, you know, there's a lot of amazing organizations out there. Um, and everybody does something super unique. This is our little spin on it. Like, I think, I think this has heavy influence, uh, on me, like, because this, this, the spark of this idea came, uh, nine years ago when, uh, Mountain Dew approached us and said, how'd you like to make a Mountain Dew commercial with Lil Wayne? So we got 10 kids to make a Mountain Dew commercial with Lil Wayne. And I did not know I, this. That's amazing. 
I saw the potential in young people beyond snowboarding, skateboarding, and surfing. And I was like, and I'm like, I'm a child of immigrants. And I'm like, it's not enough to just take these kids snowboarding, skateboarding, surf, because that's not fair. It's not fair to show them something and not like hold their hand, give them the skills, pat them on the shoulder and be like, you got this. You can go ahead and do it. And here's the path and how to do it. Like, it's not fair to just take kids snowboarding, skateboarding, and surfing. You have to give them, round them out and give them other skills so that they become successful, so that they actually have the skills and the money. I can show you a screenshot of a kid who was in Stoke many years ago. Now he's a, mecha a mechanical engineer. He works at this big company in California. He just showed a picture of himself snowboarding. And he's got a, a he's got a patent for a coronary stint, right? I got another kid who's in medical school, right? There's a, a kid in the movie, Hector. They're like, he's an entrepreneur. Like he owns yeah. his own development company. Like that's what I want. Yeah. I want, I don't want to make snowboarders. I want kids to be able to have the money to afford to be a snowboarder. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. <laughs> none, of, none of it else matters. Like none of it else matters. We give them the spark and then we give them the tools. We give them the mentors. And then, yeah, I'll give you one last thing before you go to the movie. I remember, I remember going, taking, I got this, I got an invite to a, a gala, like a fancy gala. So I took one of the kids, the Stoke kids. He was like my plus one. That's awesome. And some, and it was like, who else was there? There was some, there was, anyway. Oh, there was a guy who was, uh, he was P Diddy's landlord in New York City. Like he <laughs> rolled up to me. He was like, hey, you're the you're the people from this, this skiing snowboarding program, right? And like, yeah, because somebody told him to come and talk. So we started talking and then this a venture capital guy started talking to me and then I turned my back and then, the, the venture capital guy would happen to be a surfer. He goes, hey, you're the surfing people, right? I'm like, yes. First thing that this kid did was shake hands real hard. He's like, ooh, that's a good handshake. And then they started talking about surfing. Who do you think is going to get a better opportunity? A kid yeah. that doesn't know how to have these skills, regardless <laughs> of their background, or someone right. that does? You see what yeah. I'm saying? Totally. And that, and that was it. That, like, we were yeah. talking for 20 minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. And I, yeah. You had said, I forget if this, I think this quote might be in the movie. So let me know if I should just skip this. But there was a quote about how you feel like you have had an unfair advantage because of board sports, because of snowboarding. I love that quote. But I want to dive into it because it's like, what does that mean? And what is this unfair advantage that you think the kids oh are God. also getting, the students? So uh, snowboarding, snowboarding taught me to never give up, right? Snowboarding, snowboarding, when I snowboard, and I'm sure it's anybody that's watching this, and maybe it's you when you're, you know, skiing, you yeah. feel like you are in your alpha form. Like mm -hmm. you are the best. You are the most evolved human being at that moment because you're living physically and mentally and focus wise on your highest potential, right? Mm -hmm you're able to block out everything and really focus in on the moment. And so I've been able to apply that to running stoked. And with that, like, because I built a lifestyle and a culture and a career on that, I, I literally feel like I have an unfair advantage to anybody else that's run a nonprofit. Like, and I'm not doing it to flex. I'm just doing it because like, I just, I, it's in me to not give up. And I yeah. learned that from like, like, you know, when you're, and this is probably the same with skiing. It's like, you know, when you're like sticking in, in an edge, right? Like you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're on an edge and sometimes you feel like giving up, but then you know that if you give up on that edge, you're going to wipe out really hard. Like sometimes <laughs> yeah. when I snowboard, I go for the hardest thing. I go for the hardest run, the steepest hill, because I literally want to, 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 to like condition my mind to go through challenging things. Yeah. I have a friend who's a, uh, a donor. He's in, uh, he's a startup guy and he's a surfer and a skateboarder and a snowboarder. Nice. 
And I was like, and we talked about it. I was like, oh my God, you have, you totally have an unfair advantage. He's like, I know. He goes, I like for anybody that doesn't do those in business, he yeah. just runs laps around them. And and again, I, yeah. I, I say this to anybody that does any of these activities, if you totally. commit yourself to it, like I see people like somebody like, like somebody like Tony Hawk or not even Tony or somebody else, like they have the mind yeah. to be jillionaires and to be like really successful. Yeah. They just yeah, happen like to grit it or towards, perseverance. Exactly. They happen to channel it towards their craft. It's the same thing. Mm, I love that. And so that's honestly that that sort of thing that I just explained, I literally wanna wanna put it in a bottle and I wanna feed it to kids. I wanna put it in a bottle and I wanna feed it to kids. Whatever the thing that I just talked yeah. about is, that's what right. I wanna bottle up and sell like Red Bull sells uh I buy it. Drink. I buy it. Let's yeah. Go. I know. I buy it. I've been drinking it all day. Yeah. It's like, okay, next, next idea. <laughs> Let's go. Cool. Um, so we don't have a ton of questions yet. If you do have a question, now is the time to ask. Um, the first one I have for you is how did you create the partnerships with huge and it's a, like companies? Uh, good question. I, uh, so I mean, really, I I knew I knew somebody there. I knew like a creative director there, and yeah. he was he was a mentor and a supporter. And he saw what we were doing, and he was like, "I think we could help you." Like, and so, I think if you're working at an if you're working at a company right now, and uh, you are looking to make an impact, like. This friend that I'm talking about, like, in addition to being really good at his job, got the eyes and ear and the attention of really senior people. So, like, if you want a promotion, <laughs> you want to raise and you want to be able to, like, you know, have the influence of, you know, they, they engage about 50 of their employees every year. And we've been working with them, I think, for like four or five years now. So they've gotten a lot of people involved yeah. and like, and they've been mentors to us. And so it's just been a, it's, it's just been a great uh, relationship, but like, yeah, it started because I know somebody there um, and then they sold their boss and then the boss sold their boss. And they're like, every, every company that I found is looking for something interesting to do with their employees. And so we just happen to be it. So I'll, I'll add there, what's the ask for anyone who's watching who works at a cool company? Is there one? Yeah, like hit me <laughs> up, steve at stoke.org, and, um, and let's figure out how to get your uh, coworkers to become mentors. Because um, that's, that's what we're doing right now is like reaching out to different companies to get their employees to become mentors. So they will have like 10 from this company, 20 from that company. And so... Um, that's, that's what we're excited about. Cool. I love that. Yeah. And in case you missed it before I and many other people are doing the stoked mentoring challenge next week and we'll send the link out, but you should join if you're even like a little bit interested in when you dip your toe into potentially becoming a mentor, cause that's a good first step. And I, I assume the, the required first step to becoming a mentor, right? Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. Cool. All right, sweet. Well, we don't have any other questions, so I'm gonna announce the raffle winner and then we can awesome. uh, wrap this night up. Awesome. Good? Okay. Yeah. All right, so I did a random number generator um, using the internet and <laughs> um, the the person who won is Brandy Lee. And as a reminder, you're getting a really cool North Face face cam duffel. So I will email you. Congrats to Brandy Lee and thank you to everyone who donated. You guys are awesome. And I'm sure, um, you know, uh, stoked to put that money to good use. And that's it from us, I think. Steve, any uh, final words? Sarah, you're awesome. Uh, so is your community. Um, I definitely thank you and applaud you for your leadership and and your support of Stoke throughout the years and always giving us a platform and opportunity. We really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I love Stoked, so <laughs> always. <laughs> All right. Well, we love you, so. Yeah. <laughs> With that, good night, everyone.